What is up guys and welcome to our unboxing of the Starlink Battle for Atlas Nintendo Switch Edition. So we're going to go ahead and open this up and see what's inside. It's a little tag up the top here. Now the reason that I picked this one up is because it was going for so cheap and it really makes me wonder why it was going for so cheap. Um, I've heard decent things about it. I haven't heard that it's a bad game or anything like that. Um, but let's just go through the unboxing quickly. So on the back here, it has a range of different uh, information. I'm um, sorry if the reflection's a little bit bad there, but basically you can attach your own weapons to the little uh, planes that you can get. And they were going for pretty cheap when I uh, went and picked this one up. $36 Australian, which I was uh, pretty happy to pay, especially because uh, the main reason that I wanted this is to get the little AR wing that uh, Fox has which is only um, with the Nintendo Switch Edition, which is pretty nice. Um, so yeah, you can attach your own weapons whatever way you want. Um, there's also a controller mount. I'm not sure if the controller mount actually comes uh, in this set, but uh, would be cool regardless. So it says, explore the wonders of the Atlas star system and its seven planets. Seamlessly change weapons and starships to adapt and overcome the enemy. Improve your gear, unlock abilities, and build alliances with factions. Help Fox McCloud take down his longtime nemesis, Wolf O'Donnell. Whew! It's getting intense. As you guys can hear, cops going past. But that's not going to ruin our unboxing. So, let's have a look at the box here. Very nice. Starlink Battle for Atlas. Nice on the back. Ubisoft. Ubisoft make this. Hmm. Who to know? All right. So they've got their little uh, flaps here. I'm going to open this one up. And let's have a look at what's inside. So one of the easiest things to get to straight away is the box. Um, pretty nice artwork here with Fox on the front, um, plus the other pilots from the game. Um, I don't really know much about this. Um, to use this software, a download of 6 gig by a wireless internet connection is required. Um, and then it just says everything that it usually says on the uh, back of the box that I just read out before. Um, we also have what looks like a little poster here. Let's see how big this post folds out to. That's a little checklist, whoops. Little checklist as well, showing all the different pilots, starships, and different weapons that you can get at least from what was available at release date. So that's quite a few there. Um, pretty cool. I don't know. Yeah, I can't, unless I really, really enjoy this game, I can't see me going out and buying any more. I would just like the uh, Star Fox one. That's pretty nice. I wonder what the uh, poster for the other games is like. Alrighty. So uh, this looks like it is all in this plastic covering here. Sorry, I just hit the microphone. Um, so, that's what you get. It's pretty cool. So it does come with a controller mount by the looks of it, which is up there. Nice. Um, I'm interested to take the AR wing out, but I want to do it gently, so as not to uh, ruin it. But it seems pretty durable regardless. That is pretty nice. Now, we also have two pilots. Fox McCloud is one of them. I'll move him a little bit close to the camera. I know it's a bit hard to focus on, but you get the point. We've got the AR wing. We've got this pilot here. Not actually sure on what his name is or anything. Oh, look at that. The camera auto focused. Camera, you're good. Well done. Then we got two little weapons. We got this one, which is like a fire cannon by the looks of it, with a little fire symbol on the back. And if I could get this out, of course I'd drop it on the floor. All right, and we've got like an ice cannon thing here, which is pretty cool. Nice. And the ice symbol on the uh, top there. Cool. Can you take this out? No, you can't. All right, so you can attach those to the ship. And the last part, sorry for the noise. guy's name. Uh, is it Mason Rama? 
Yeah, I think this guy's a mason runner. The guy that comes with the uh, pack. But anyway, so we got our little controller here. Um, the ship. Just goes on top like that. That's nice. Put something under there. So, I think you can put the weapons on there. Nice. And then you can put your captain. Ah, that's pretty cool how this works. So you put your captain inside the ship, clips in, and then it inserts this way, like this. Oh, and I didn't do a very good job of that one. I think you have to put the captain in first, like that. Sits on there. And then, we put the ship over the top. Look at that. And Fox is on the inside of the ship now. How cool does that look? Little control mount. The ships aren't too heavy, they're pretty lightweight. I'm pretty happy with uh, how you could uh, sit there and play that. The Joy-Cons will fit straight inside there. Let me just go and grab the Joy-Cons quickly. So I can see the sort of weight we're dealing with. Alrighty. Let's chuck her on. So this must be able to interact with the uh, Joy-Cons somehow. It reads the ship that's on there. That's what it looks like with the Joy-Cons in there as well. Fits very nicely. Controller grip is decent. I like the little, I like the way that the uh, controller part sits in like the palm of your hands, which is very cool. Um, so I guess the next stage is, is that we have to actually play the game and see how we go. So I'm gonna give you guys a review of what I thought of Starlink Battle for Atlas right now. Alrighty guys, welcome back. Um, we just played one hour of Starlink Battle for Atlas, and I can say I'm pretty happy with the game overall. Um, one of the most impressive things that I found straight out of seeing this straight away was the uh, figurines. Now the detail on them is quite good. You got all the little weapons and everything like that, and you can take them off, switch them around as much as you want. And uh, something that I found in the tutorial is you can actually take the wings off and interchange them with other ships as well. I want to be careful with that, just to make sure I don't break it or anything. Oh, what? Oh, look at that. You can like extend it out and everything. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that is so cool. Let's chuck it back on quickly. Look, look at that. That makes this ship look even more awesome. Now, the unfortunate thing about the figurines is that it does make the controller a little bit more bulky because you have to have the Joy-Cons in the controller mount. Um, it sits quite nicely, putting the pilot in the uh, centre here. So you basically just put him through, click him on, and then you basically just put the ship over the top with the weapons on, and he'll be ready to go, just like that, which is quite nice. And apparently you can open up the wings, which makes this ship look even cooler. So, awesome. All right. Now, that's pretty much it in terms of the uh, figurines and the controller and everything like that. Um, it worked pretty effectively. I think that the, uh, and like everything behind it in terms of the figurines works well. However, makes me, making the controller that bit bulkier, it just doesn't make it as enjoyable to sit there for, say, like an hour. I found about around the half an hour mark, that's when my hand started to feel a bit heavier, and I didn't want to, like, invest as much into it because of how it felt. Um, I like the way that the characters develop, um, considering there's so many of them, including Fox's crew as well. Um, it is quite good to have them all there. Um, and like it allows you to see which your character, the one that's loaded in, um, how they sort of uh, address the situation and the story, which is quite nice to see. Um, I love the freedom to explore. However, getting around is sometimes a little bit of a hassle because of the amount of um, 
time that it takes. But overall, I'm pretty happy with like how you can fly around, how you can move, like as you guys just saw then, moving around quite slowly, but that's fine because like that's like your general sort of exploring on the map. You can speed up, but you can't engage the thrusters all the time because they will run out and you just have to wait for them to reload. Especially for exploring big planets, it's quite tedious to do, I guess. Um, in terms of these battle sequences like you guys see here, um, it's quite cool to see. Um, like, it works quite well, but, uh, like, yeah. It, 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 would, it would be better if we could speed it up a little bit more when we're travelling between places and searching for things. But the radar works pretty well. Um, it doesn't give too much away, but it does allow you to see what you need to see. Um, overall, I can say what I paid for, for this game, I am happy with. $36 Australian, that is really, really cheap, especially for a game that didn't come out that long ago. It comes with the figurines, the spaceship looks fantastic. Um, would you want to spend any more on it in terms of buying like little figurines? Um, to be able to load in for the pilots and the ships and everything like that. If you're going to get invested in this game, like if you're going to play it quite a bit, then I would say yes, absolutely. The main reason why I got this game is because of the star, um, the Fox pilot, the AR wing. Um, so that was sort of like the main reason why I wanted this game and I thought I'd give it a try. Um, I'd say that based on what I've played so far, but it's going to be about four to six hours to pass the game if you were really trying to rush through it. Um, but if you wanted to try and collect everything, then I'd say 15 to 20 hours is what you're looking at. Um, so, like, it's a decent game, especially if paying that small price for it. Um, I'd be pretty happy with that to get the uh, value out of the game. Um, I feel as though this is more focused towards... Um, kids based on like what I saw beforehand like all the advertising and everything for it um, but it sort of appeals to both like I can see how um, hardcore gamers could also enjoy this one as well um, but I do believe that kids just chucking on the little toys and everything like that and giving it a go that's yeah I, like that's what I feel is that their market is with the um, playing toys um, sort of things like with the amiibos and all that sort of thing um, but us collectors like him too. So, overall, I would give Starlink Battle for Atlas 6, maybe 6.5 out of 10. Um, it's got great visuals um, and the ability to explore wherever you want, to fly out to these planets. Very similar to uh, that game for uh, PS4 originally that uh, really, really sucked at first. But they've added a lot more into it. I haven't played it since. I can't even remember the game, but yeah, it's pretty good. Um, and what I don't like so much about this game, the piloting system is probably the negative point of it, and also the weight of the uh, figurine on the controller. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with how this went. Um, I am very happy with the price that I paid for this game, and if you guys can get it for that cheap, then I say go for it. Go and pick up this game, because it is very much worth it. So thanks for watching, guys. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. This is our first ever review posted on this channel. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you could chuck us a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace.